Alright, so one of the toughest things as a new player in Raid Shadow Legends, man, is learning exactly which champions you want to hold onto and nourish and protect and use in the late game and which ones to just spend as food in the tavern, right? Um, it's really, really tough, especially when you consider that there's actually a bunch of uncommon champions that you wouldn't think would be so strong that actually turn out to just be, well, extremely, extremely good, especially in a free-to-play account, you know, where economy is important and you're trying to get the most out of what you've got. Uncommon champs can also be sweet for a number of reasons. One being that they're very, very easy to upgrade their skills because it's much, much easier to farm copies of these uncommon champions um, and use their copies to then upgrade their skills in the tavern. As already mentioned, some uncommons that we're going to cover in this list are just fantastic for blasting very, very specific bosses in the game a little bit later on, and so they're just worth leveling to at least level 50 uh, for that reason. And finally, having a good range of strong characters across your account is going to help you on later on in the game in things like faction wars, where you are limited to a faction type when building your team and progressing through um, yeah, that various type of content. And I'm going to tell you what else can help you clear through a ton of content in this game. Epic Champions, which are not the topic of this video, but they're the topic of right now, because you can get one for free simply by clicking the link down below at the top of the video description, or by scanning the QR code that is right above my head as we speak. By clicking the link below, you will not only unlock a ton of starting resources, including half a million silver just to get your feet up the ground. But upon hitting level 15 on your account, you will also unlock Juliana completely for free. Crazy, ridiculously powerful attack damage champion. Insane for downing bosses. Her abilities include, and you gotta love this, Battle Dance attacks one enemy two times, so crazy, crazy damage. Damage based on attack also, so crazy scaling with this. And Fire of Purgation, are you kidding me with that ability name? Purgation, dude, is that really an even, is that even a word? Frankly, I wouldn't argue with her, man, have you seen her? She looks crazy as hell. Anyhow, if you want free stuff, scan the QR code or click the link down below in the video description, and that free stuff can be yours. Alrighty, man, the first of all uncommon champs, we're covering five in total, arrives in the barbarian category. Dude, barbarians are just stacked. When it comes to like rare farmable champs and uncommon champs, we gotta start with good old Outlander, man. This guy and his ability to scale as both a stun artist and a damage dealer as the game goes on, depending on how you want to build him, is just nuts. He looks mental as well. Are you kidding me, dude? Abilities. Savage Strike level one. Attacks one enemy two times. Simple damage dealing stuff, damage based on attack. You can see how you scale this guy up with a lot of attack gear, how he can absolutely pop off, but his real power comes into play with the Talisman of Power. Attacks all enemies. You've always got to love it whenever an ability says that. Attacks all enemies has a 50% chance of decreasing the turn meter by 30% damage based on attack. So you can go one or two ways with this guy. You can put him in stun gear and fully level up his talisman of power to get it down to a three turn cooldown and use him as an area of effect stun bot. Or you can just go the damage route and just make him a, just a wave clearing madman. Works either way. Outlander, definitely one worth holding onto. Another sweet part about Outlander actually is that he is farmable in campaign stage 9, so he's very, very easy to come upon. He's very, very easy to um, pump copies of Outlander into in the tavern just to level up all of his abilities. Really, really good stuff. Next up, we have another barbarian right beside Outlander. We've got good old Shield Guard. And dude, this guy is also farmable in campaign stage 9. Shield Guard, dude, the proof is in his reviews. If I just hit the reviews button right here, you can see how people have scored this guy across various fields of content. Fairly average across most things, but honestly, every now and again, things like Faction Wars, obviously he's one of the better barbs, um, but campaign locations, Spider's Den, Minotaur's Labyrinth, these dungeon bosses right here, get cloven in twin <laughs> by Shield Guard. This guy is a crazy area of effect raid boss, man. Okay, so uppercut level 1 attacks one enemy, has a 30% chance of placing a 15% speed decrease debuff uh, on the enemy for two turns. Damage inflicted is proportional to defense, and damage is based on defense. Okay, dude. So, this is going to be the theme of Shield Guard, man. Check this out. Battle stance, damage based on defense. Attacks all enemies. Again, we'd love to read it. Fills this champion's turn meter by 20% on each critical hit bro this guy is crazy as hell if we check into the recommended artifacts here as well you can see how people tend to build this guy um needless to say he's very very defense heavy 
Um, and also people are slotting him in the life set as well. Honestly, I can see maybe experiment with some crit action with this guy as well and just go for the uh, for the additional crits for the battle stance synergy. I think that could be pretty tight. I'm yet to try it out myself, of course. But Shield Guard, if you need additional wave clear, if you need additional trash clear uh, in your team, Shield Guard is a fantastic, fantastic one to hold onto. And actually, just scrolling up a little bit as well, um, I believe War Maiden who is also a fantastic goddamn barbarian champ, so this is a rare, is also farmable in campaign stage 9. So, bro, the amount of barbarians that are just really, really solid that you can farm by just spamming missions over and over again in campaign stage 9 is kind of nutty. Moving on from the barbarians, heading on to the high elves. We are looking for Elfguard. Where is she? Where is she hiding? There she is, dude. Good old Elfguard. This is a classic farmable in... Where is she farmable again? Campaign stage six. Had to refer to my notes there real quick. The humble elf guard. What makes her so goddamn good? Let's cover abilities real quick, man. Puncture. This is just a pretty standard A1, right? Attacks one enemy. 25% chance of placing a decrease attack debuff for one turn. But where elf guard really comes into her own as ever is with the good old A2, man. Attacks one enemy and decreases the enemy's current turn meter by 50%. Potentially ridiculously, ridiculously powerful. Now, of course, this does only attack one enemy. It's not one big crazy AoE uh, like we've seen before, not big one big area attack that hits everybody. It's just one target, and there's pros and cons to that. Obviously, against packs of enemies, this sucks. <laughs> this sucks massively. Um, however, against boss encounters and various boss encounters in the game, where it's just you versus a big guy, this can find immensely, immensely good value. And while Elfgard is a little bit more slept on, or rather just a little bit less utilized, bit lower rated, she doesn't quite break it into the uh, into the 4 plus score for most uh, content types in the game. She just does pretty goddamn well, given that she's an uncommon, given that she's so, so easy to farm. Yeah, she's absolutely one worth holding on to, worth leveling up, and worth getting the level 6 Impale skilled up to make this thing a 2 turn cooldown. You can also gear up Elfgard in... God, what was the gear set again? Relentless gear, goddammit. Put Elfgard in Relentless gear, give her the chance to instantly get a free turn. It instantly resets her turn uh, on a percentage proc chance, right? And so you can effectively get Impale once it's fully skilled up down to what is effectively a 1 turn cooldown at that point. And just be getting this thing off like crazy as long as you're Relentless set is procking. Now, yeah, there's a little bit of RNG involved with that, but you know, for an uncommon, it's pretty damn good. And all right, man, the next two uncommon champs we're going to be covering are actually going to be those that you can only really break out of Mystery Shards, so I'm going to be hoping to roll into these guys as the video unfurls. We're going to head back into the Barbarians and check out the good old Zephyr Sniper. So to be honest, the strength of Zephyr, uh, Zephyr Sniper kind of speaks for itself. It's all really in her ear. One. Suppressive Fire level 1, bro, she just has a level 1 skill that attacks all enemies? Are you kidding me, dude? Damage based on defense that has a 15% chance of increasing the cooldown of a random skill on each enemy target by one turn. So just a pretty good effect as well. Not only that, but Zephyr Sniper takes very, very few copies slash rare skill books, which I don't think you should be putting skill books into Zephyr Sniper by any means. But um, yeah, you can level up her skills very, very easily using either books or copies of Zephyr Sniper with only four levels uh, to get to max on Suppressor Fire, which is kind of crazy. And Ranger's skill, which is uh, area of effect heal. I wonder if guys one skill book meant to just knock the cooldown down a little bit. This champ is crazy as hell, particularly in very, very stun heavy gear because she's hitting all enemies basically every single turn. Dude, the amount of control this champ can get off is just insane and has no business having this much power on an uncommon champ. But there it is. Sadly, we can only get her from Mystery Shards, so that sucks a little bit. But as you can see, man, the ratings speak for themselves, particularly on Spider's Den. Adds all over the place being constantly spawned in on Spider's Den. So just the ability to mass control them on this boss alone is just kind of nuts, again, for an uncommon champ. Um, yeah unprecedented levels of control. And finally, that brings us to Sacred Order and good old Armager. You knew it was coming. Look, we actually have him collected, dude. I'm so happy about that, man. Oh my goodness, my second shard ever cracked. We pick up the good old Armager. Why is Armager so good? Well, kind of similar to Elfguard. Riposte is level one attack, 
No cooldown. Attacks one enemy. Decreases the turn meter by 30% if this attack is critical. So a little bit of gear dependency going on. But you know, still pretty tight. He also has later rest on his ear too. Attacks one enemy. Enemies killed by the skill cannot be revived. Damage is based on defense and enemy max HP. So when it comes to gearing armager, basically just get him to 100% crit as soon as possible and um... Yeah, he's just like stupid against against bosses. That's really it. That's all there is to it. As you can see, oh my god. While he's kind he's like very, very polarizing, right? He's either like really crap in certain content, or he's like just legitimately one of the like probably the best uncommon champion in the game to hold on to for other content. So yeah. You pull an armager from a mystery shard, you hold on to this guy, goddammit. Few honorable mentions here that I just want to attach to the end of this video. And by the way, if you've got any uncommon champs that you really, really believe in, that you trust, that you would never send to the tavern to be used as food, make sure to include them in the comments down below, man. I'm still learning a whole bunch about this game, and I'm sure that if you were to comment a few down below, you'd be helping out some other people as well. Word bearer, man. This is one to keep an eye on, mostly for her A2. Good old honorable mention. Increase, uh, sorry, place a 30% increased defense buff on all allies for two turns. You can knock the cooldown of this thing all the way down to two turns, and it's basically a permanent 30% increased defense buff on your allies. This just has crazy synergy with basically every champ in the game that synergizes with, or rather skills, with the defense stats. So I definitely think that Wordbearer is one at least worth keeping or thinking twice about maybe before using her for food. Oh, I forgot to mention, actually, Word Bearer can only be collected via Mystery Shards. The next champ we're going to be covering is all the way down at the bottom here of the Skinwalker list. Good old Sita. This guy can be farmed in Campaign Stage 4, I think it is. Yeah, Campaign Stage 4, I believe. This guy is A1, attacks one enemy, 25% chance of placing a decrease speed debuff. But it's not really about his A1. This is all about his catch ability, his A2 ability. This one is great, dude. Attacks four times at random. Four swings, dude, in one attack. Decrease the turn meter by 15% if this attack is critical. Yeah, um, crazy stuff. Especially when considering that not only does Seta then skill pretty well against, like, packs of enemies, but single target? This ability, dude? Oh my god, if you have enough crit to, like, proc this a few times against a single entity, you're talking about reducing turn meter by, like, over half in one go. Definitely, definitely a worthwhile honorable mention, and I will be keeping any copies of him should I stumble into those in Campaign Stage 4. And lastly, we have Saurus. Why did I add this guy to the... To the list again. I honestly can't even remember, man. Let me read his stuff. Oh, yeah, he's got two abilities that attack all enemies. <laughs> okay, that explains it, man. So his A1 attacks all enemies, damage based on attack, tight. Um, and fire wave level one attacks all enemies two times, goddammit. Has a 10% chance of placing a 50% heal reduction debuff for 110, and places a 50% heal reduction debuff if the target's current health is less than 40% absolute nonsense honestly why did i not put this guy in the top five man this guy replaces elf guard right no no problem at all in the top five uncommon champs this guy i believe uh when it comes to uncommon champions is actually the best camp uh, campaign farmer of all of the uncommon champs and you're gonna need one of those as the game goes on so you find yourself a saurus farmable in campaign stage 10 by the way you hold on to this son of a gun like your life depends on it or like your wallet depends on it. <laughs> because that's much more accurate. And alright man, well it turned out that we covered like 8 uncommon champs with, uh, well, once all things were said and done. Let's see if we can crack into any of them men. With these good old mystery shards, we're gonna open up 10 at a time. Intercessor, I mean not really, not great, conscript, goo. Okay man, not the best. Oh god, okay, no let's not do that. Summon another turn. Oh my god, no hang, oh my, oh, oh god. Dude, you get, you get, oh, I thought it was just some random thing popping up to annoy me, but it turns out I've actually got to increase my, uh, my champ storage a wee bit. Never using red gems for this. Okay, let's just get the cash spent. Do I want to unlock another bunch? Nah, I don't need to just now. Okay, man, let's crack open another 10. Let's see what we get here. Okay. Oh, baby! Oh my god, dude, are you kidding me? We actually pulled Saurus, dude! Oh my god! Alright man, I know he's campaign farmable and all, but bro! Cool man, I'm pretty goddamn stoked about that. Alright. 
Sweet. All right, it looks like I, 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 I need to get more storage now to unlock the rest of them. Just give me a minute. Okay, man, I just pumped some goddamn level 1s into Saurus real quick just to open up some uh, some inventory space. All right, man, let's crack open the rest of them. Dude, Saurus, man, let's go. Least creative name I've ever seen, but still. Sun Tribe, Skull Squire. All right, dude, not the greatest. Let's crack open the remaining six, man. Never know, I might get super, super lucky in these as well. Oh, my God, dude, so I pulled Amager and, uh, and Saurus? Pretty quickly, man. And again, I know Sor uh, Saurus is campaign farmable and all, but still... Feels pretty good to me, you know? You gotta take these wins as a free-to-play Andy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Alright, man. Okay, this is just a whole lot of trash so far. No way, dude. You know what? I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna... I'll just pay the damn silver. To increase my capacity. Oi, 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 oi. Who's this? Battle sister, I don't know you. You look like food. What we got here... We got some Wind Talker action. What are his abilities? Attacks one enemy, 15% chance of placing a decreased accuracy. Debuff for one turn. Eh. I mean, eh. Um, and Spiritual Wind places a 60% increased uh, defense buff on an ally for two turns. Heals the target by 20% of their max HP. Dude, not gonna lie, I would love to combo this guy with Shield Guard and just like a max defense build and just watch Shield Guard one-shot everybody. Maybe I'll actually hold on to this guy a little bit. Even if I don't think he, he's probably not the best. What the hell do I know? And all right, man, that is going to be all the shards. You know what? That's probably just going to be the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you also did enjoy. If you ain't even playing Raid Shadow Legends yet, I don't know what you're doing. Go ahead and use the link at the top of the video description or click the QR code above my noggin right now. And you will unlock your very own Epic Champion for free as soon as your account hits level 15 in the form of Juliana. That plus a whole bunch of other free goodies to help get you started too. So thanks for watching guys, hope you all did enjoy, and I catch all of y'all just a tad bit later man.